Um, I assume it's a good thing though. Oh yes, just surprising. Broccoli. Hi friends, welcome to Sunflower Hill. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back and thank you for joining me again. I'm Tina and I'm a single mum homesteading here in Victoria, Australia. It's um, been a very long dry year. It was dry last year from about midwinter and it's still dry now. So I'm putting in my autumn seeds and I have cheated a little bit this year. I'm gonna show you how I've done uh, how I do my mulch and I'm going to show you how I'm putting the the cover on if you've seen my spring planting video it's exactly the same system with the cover but I'm doing something a bit different with mulch at the moment and I'm just going to show you um, some of the mulch that I'm using different kinds of mulch and just have a quick talk about that um, but I'm also going to just put my seeds in and put that cover on so if you want more detailed information about the um, cover that I use to protect my seeds while they're germinating and while they're getting going then I will link that video at the end and down the bottom in the description as well okay so let's have a look at what I've done already this is um, the top run of my emporium next video is going to be on the emporium um, it's going to be a bit of a deep dive into how I did it what my thinking is um, how you could use the idea um, and modify it to suit yourself to suit your situation or you know some elements of it i'm a big believer in taking what works for you and adapting it to you know what works for your situation all right let's have a look at what i've done already so so far i've dug up the uh, row this side uh, along there i well dug it up by dug it up i mean i went down to the front paddock and I collected <laughs> four barrow loads of horse poo and I dragged them all the way up the hill up here and then I worked them into the soil. I don't mean I turned the soil over. I try to avoid that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to be, you know, persnickety about whether you do no dig or turn your soil or whatever, but I'm trying to avoid turning it right over or completely disrupting it. So I use a fork to sort of wriggle the soil, loosen the soil and just work the horse poo in, in this case, a little bit. You do not have to use horse poo, use whatever you've got. But I do strongly suggest working some sort of animal manure into your soil. Now, some of this manure was quite fresh and some of it was quite, most of it was I had been sitting in the paddock for a few weeks because I'm working it in because it's veggies it's outdoors I've never had a problem um, doing that a lot of advice is to age your manure first so basically compost it absolutely go for it you know there's nothing wrong with doing that personally I just didn't have time and I don't have the extra energy and the extra space so I just collected it and dug it in and because it's in the soil and it's got you know lots of other stuff in there and because veggies use uh, uh, veggies are very heavy feeders they're very fast growers for that reason I don't have a problem with putting it straight in so that's what I did I, du I dug that through or you know aerated pushed mixed that through and then I put a layer of um, bedding from the, the duck house so that's basically just straw and duck poo mixed through that um, and then on top I've put a layer of mulch just straight mulch and I'll show you the mulches I've used <laughs> first before I do that this is the only survivor of the great snail attack um, of last year of my um, perennial leeks I was pretty sad to lose all of them but there's one left so this guy will definitely produce flowers and little plantlets and I'll be back on track and in the meantime I have actually bought leeks from a local organic farm and I am um, have just used the bum ends <laughs> again have a look at that video if you want to figure out what I do with that um, and I'm, I'm getting more leeks going all right so this one has been thoroughly mulched with straw but if you look along here you'll see that this is straw um, and this is quite different 
this doesn't look the same. There's a reason for that, it's because it's not the same thing. Here, you can see where I've, um, I've just worked in the horse poo. Um, so you can see the horse manure I've worked in there. I use that because I've got that. And these are garlic that are regrowing from last year's um, crop. And I will do another video on green garlic soon. So I've left those. Along here, again, um, this isn't, this is just the stuff from the duck pen. So it's got, you can see it's got feathers and it's got a bit of duck poo in there. Um, this is all drying out again, which is annoying because <laughs> I did water it in quite well. Okay, so let's talk about the different kinds of manure that I've used here. This stuff here, you can see it's grey, it's not got a very nice colour. Um, and it's really, really dusty. So this is just packaged up. Um, I'm not sure if this was, I think this was the pea straw. Pea straw mulch packaged up in a plastic bag. Not ideal, but what I could get at the time. As I said, it's been really dry and there's not much around in terms of straw. So this is packaged up pea straw. I'm going to talk about what straw is compared to hay just in a minute. Um, <laughs> This is obviously not very nice quality. I have bought pea straw bales from a farmer, but that's, oh, he's like two and a half hours away and I don't even have a tow bar at the moment. So this is what I could get. And it's obviously not very nice quality. It's floor sweepings, okay? Let's be honest, it's floor sweepings from the, you know, whatever shed or, um, yeah, place has been storing the straw. They have literally swept the floor and packaged it into these bags. I'm not saying it's bad, but certainly not fresh and delicious. It will, however, do the job. Um, and the job of mulch is to protect the soil. Number one, it's to protect the soil. It's to keep moisture in. Um, it's to prevent the sun from killing all the microorganisms. And it's to, oh goodness, I've got visitors. Hello, you two. Come to help, have you? It's Gracie. Hello, Gracie. Don't scratch my... You should go out. I'll just escort this, this girl out. Come on, Gracie. Out we go. Come on. Let's go out. Let's go. Good girl. <laughs> Come on. You should go out. Gracie is a bit of a destructive garden friend. Good girl. Good girl. You can be in here. Good boy. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for your help. And the other bagged mulch that I've bought this year is this sugar cane mulch. And look, oh, I've never been in a sugar cane paddock, but pretty sure it doesn't look like this. This is obviously, again, floor sweepings. It's really dusty. It's really grey. It's really old. However, it is biomass. It will protect the soil. It will keep um, the moisture levels a lot more even, and it will suppress weeds, which are the main things I'm going for with mulch. So I'm not too bothered. It will, you know, it'll break down into the soil. It'll create biomass. It'll create a lighter, um, nicer soil. It's, yeah, it's still worth putting on. You just don't want to pay too much for it. Um, and then the third type of mulch that I've got is these bales of actual straw. Um, obviously, it looks much nicer, smells much nicer. It's actual just straw that's been chopped out of the paddock and sold. I've bought these from the local hardware because, as I said, it's been ver a very dry year and the... Um, the harvests have been much lower. The yield of, of hay and straw out of the paddocks has been much lower this year. So I buy that from the hardware in the nearest big, big enough town. So what's the difference? Why do I use straw and not hay? Hay is very different to straw. Hay is usually what is standing in a paddock, simply chopped and baled, chopped, dried and baled. It's not harvest, there's not, nothing has been taken from it. It's got all the seeds, it's basically grass. There are different types of hay. It's, you can buy grass hay or pasture hay, which is the same thing. It just means whatever happens to be growing in the paddock. 
um, or you can buy lucerne hay, you can buy oaten hay, depending on what animals you feed, you, you're feeding. You can buy clover, vetch, all sorts of things, rye. But the difference with hay is that it's the entire plant. It's been grown, it's been cut down, it's been dried, and it's been baled, and that's what you're getting. The downside of at least pasture hay is that it's still got the seeds in it. So whatever grasses and plants, you know, quote unquote weeds were growing in that pasture are going to come up in your garden, if, particularly if it's reasonably fresh hay. That's the downside of hay. The upside is that it's generally cheaper. Oh, it's often quite cheap. It's quite available. And if you're, if you're using something like lucerne, then you don't have that downside of the um, the grasses. So, but you do have the downside that it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> Lucerne hay and all of those sort of nicer hays are much more expensive. So that's the difference. That's what hay is. Straw, on the other hand, like this stuff, is basically the byproduct of growing something else. So this here is wheat straw. Um, which has come from, you know, big wheat farms. They harvest the seeds off the top and then they come back and cut down the stalks, dry it, bale it up. So this has got no seed in it. It's, it's just the plant that has grown the seeds. So whatever kind of straw you're buying, that's the difference. The thing that they wanted from it has been harvested and the straw is what's left over of the plant. The advantages of straw is that you're not going to get any weeds growing in it. Um, it's often cheaper. Wheat straw is quite cheap usually because wheat is a, a really massive crop as in there's a very low yield per plant so it's usually grown in massive um, amounts in massive, you know, huge paddocks harvested with big machines. And so there's quite a lot of, of stem and, and leaf material left over. So it's usually quite cheap. More expensive straws, um, you know, a straw can be more expensive, particularly things like, particularly things like pea straw and this sugarcane mulch. So the sugarcane is the same thing. They just call it mulch. I've never saw, seen it in bales, maybe up north where sugarcane grows. You can buy it in bales, I'm sure you probably can. All right, so therein lies the difference. And herein lies a minky. Hello. Hello, minx. So now I'm just going to put this last bale of straw on. You can just see that this area here isn't covered and I just want to make sure everything's really densely covered particularly because it's it's such a dry season so when I water I want the water to stay there and particularly with seeds if you're planting seeds and they go dry you're not going to get anything it's the worst thing for seeds especially things like carrots carrots are really um, persnickety about not drying out so I'm just going to cut open this bale now distribute that and then we'll get, I'll get back to you when I'm putting the cover on. And there are the chooks who have cleared all the snails out of here. Thank you, girls. One thing that always grows well here is these dacon radishes. I am um, just now thinking I might actually plant that for the chooks in that next run. I really want to plant something for them um, and they really like radish greens so might just plant that since it's and this here is obviously a little crossbred radish. I've planted both daikons and other like red radishes at some point and they do crossbreed quite easily. You can tell by the flower that's not a daikon. This is the daikon flower. So something else that's doing well unsurprisingly is this um, Cape Gooseberry. And look, there's a, a nasty little, that white butterfly, he's not cute as he looks. Very destructive and that's why I can't plant brassicas now without my cover. Um, that, that it'll have laid eggs all over this, which is just an old one, an old plant from a previous season. But yeah, these Cape Gooseberries, I've eaten heaps of them. Um, but also my tomatoes are doing really well now. And yes, it is very late in the season, but um, I planted them late. I just didn't get to it. 
We've eaten quite a lot already. They're really big, luscious, beautiful tomatoes. It's splitting because of uneven watering, because it's so dry, and then I'll come along and soak it. Um, I can't remember what variety of tomatoes these are. If I figure it out, I'll put it on the screen, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> I tend to lose, lose packets and not, not keep that information with the food I grow. I just want to grow food. But um, these are pretty cool variety, whatever they are. And um, my Risa tomates are also doing super well, and they did last year as well. Um, that's them there. Funny looking characters. Lumpy tomatoes, but they taste great. Oh, is that a ripe one under there? Let's have a look. Oh, there's some ripe ones under there by the look of it. There they are, look at that. Oh, they're so delicious. That's exciting, I'm gonna eat those. <laughs> they're really sweet, but a really rich, juicy, luscious, tomato-y sort of flavor. So yeah, I do recommend growing these. They look like a gimmicky sort of thing, but actually they're really practical. They're cool and interesting, but they are practical. Um, and the, the rest of the tomatoes are doing the same. They're all fruiting at the moment. Look, I won't get fruit off some of them. It will, it will obviously get too cold pretty soon, but um, in here it's pretty protected. I've got the shade cloth, the 50% shade cloth. So that makes a big difference. That'll keep them going for a lot longer. And if I'm still getting really nice tomatoes and we're looking at frost, I will put, um, I'll get some greenhouse plastic and put that over them. This is a little self-seeded avocado. <laughs> it's doing all right in here because of the protection. It's really too cold a climate for avocados without a fair bit of protection. You can see it's struggled, but you know, if it's gonna grow, I'll leave it here, let it grow. And um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go and get gloves because these, these are all gonna be pulled out, these boys and berries, but they've grown over the top of my cover here. And also I've, I've used the cover to, to hang this. So it's actually gonna be a bit of a nuisance to get out. <laughs> Yay. But my best tomato by far has been this self-seeded one. Um, again, some sort of beef steak. Or was it self-seeded? I can't even remember, I think it was. This one is quite small, it's had really huge ones. So yeah, fantastic tomato, absolutely beautiful. There's a much bigger one in there, uh, which I might pick because it looks pretty ready. Oh my goodness, it's enormous. Oh, it's hard to pick. Oh, oh that's so heavy. Wow, that is so heavy. Ah, oh, come on. Oh goodness, I can't even pick it. <laughs> Here it comes. That's really, really big. I don't want to damage the vine, but I'm going to need both hands. It's hard to pick with one hand. Okay, finally got it off. You can't even see how big that is. That's enormous. I've got quite big hands. That's a really, really big tomato. And there's more down here. I'm gonna let them ripen on the plant. They're enormous. So yeah, yay. Yay for late tomatoes. It's autumn, but we're eating fresh tomatoes, which is really great. It saves me money because I have three kids to feed. So it genuinely saves me money having these growing. Since I've put all the work into the, the structure, I may as well use it. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to get out. <laughs> this, um, these here and the string, this will be fun. I'm not gonna film this because I don't know how I um, can make that watchable. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn everything off. I'm gonna remove it and I'm going to put it in the new run. Okay, so I didn't film, um, I didn't film the middle bits of removing all of this from the other run um, because it was a really crappy job and it was hot and I felt really crap by the end of it. It was actually really hard uh, getting in there through, there's been a lot of growth over summer. Um, some of those boys and berries had invaded, they're really prickly and hard to get out. Um, and 
the ground over there, despite my persistent watering, was so hard that I had to actually use bits of steel and pick at the soil to get some of the uh, pieces of steel out that I use for this. And the pegs at the end. So I was not in the great frame of mind to film after that. I just piled everything in here and um, gave up for the day. But anyway, the uh, hoops are up, the string is up. That's all looking fine. Um, so we're gonna plant into this today. I'm not gonna film the whole thing because I have done a more of a deep dive on this process. Um, with the spring planting video, I'll link that at the end of this video. But uh, let's just have a bit of a look at what we're gonna do. Now I've made a bucket. Uh, okay, so I've made a bucket of um, this sort of seed starting mix. It's just perlite, uh, cocoa peat, and a bit of compost mixed through it. I'm just gonna use that to get the seeds going. It'll retain moisture, but it's still fairly airy. So that should give the seeds the best start. We're supposed to be getting rain tonight, but we've been supposed to be at rain for quite a long time. So I'll believe that if I see it. <laughs> So watering. Um, so it's ideal to water before you plant rather than um, water over the top of your seeds as you put them in. Anyway, of course this uh, mulch that I've set on top is also really dry. So you really need to get that nice and wet for it to hold moisture. Otherwise it's not really gonna do that much. So we're doing that, the kids are helping me with that. And I have actually cheated and bought some seedlings it's been that kind of year and I'm going to whack those in and I'm going to whack in all the seeds. Just quickly show you how I do it again. Okay, something else uh, that's really nice that has happened is that the, um, the leeks that I had, my perennial leeks, Again, see that video if you like. I will link it down below in the comments. But my perennial leeks have popped back up. Um, after being mulched and watered, they've come back and, and having weeds and stuff removed. The boysenberries had taken over this area as well. Um, and they've all been removed. So been pulled out and dug up and removed. So yeah, I'm really glad to see these little guys coming back up again. So I'll leave them there and I'm also going to plant some elephant garlic with them. I uh, have read that this is more closely related to leeks than garlic, but it looks pretty garlicky. <laughs> it tastes pretty garlicky and you use it like garlic. So I'm going to plant it here close to the leeks, not right on top of them, but um, I'm going to plant that here. A few other things as well. Okay, so planting garlic is really simple. It doesn't matter what type of garlic you use. You start out with a whole um, corm like this and just simply break it up. These big, giant uh, elephant garlics will come apart really easily. But you can see that there's a bottom end like that, a flat end where it was attached to the, um, to the bottom of the, the plant. And then you'll see that is flat when you take the, the um, clove off. And it is really simple. Don't peel it, don't do anything. Just put it in like this. So you want that flat piece down into the ground and you need it, the top of it at about soil level. And there's a goose being destructive. Next one. All right, same thing. Put the flat piece, flat part down. So you're planting it the way it was. What was down stays down. This bit was the roots of the plant. So this was down, you want it to go down. Easy, and then just cover them like that. Oh, the cricket. Chook chooks. Okay, and again, really quick process. So I've planted these two uh, garlics and that's just one. So I've planted these two garlics in literally a minute. So planting garlic is, is that simple. Don't make it more complicated than it is. Don't peel them, um, just whack them in. Okay, so I'm uh, 
not don't have a problem with showing you where I buy my seeds from if you're in Australia the seed collection are absolutely excellent um, really cheap and really good quality seeds I always have a really really good germination rate from their seeds so highly recommend them super cheap and no no promotions or anything like that they don't know who I am I don't know who they are I just buy their seeds so if you're in Australia that's one of the um, great companies that it's worth buying seeds from okay so what I'm going to do is just organize these into types of plants I really like their new packaging as well their packaging they manage to do seeds this cheaply because the packaging is really really simple which I like so it's basically just the inside of the seed packet rather than you know a whole lot of um, fancy packaging on the outside which is why they do it so cheaply and still good quality so um, I'm going to put these into where I think they might grow. I've also got my own carrot seeds um, and I'm going to line them up along here and then we're going to dig, put little channels in and we're going to use that um, mix, that mix that I've prepared down there to start the seeds. Okay, so the way I'm um, thinking about where I'm going to put things is where they're going to grow best and what they're going to want to be next to. So for instance, these snow peas, I unintentionally <laughs> ordered a really big bag of these as well. They're going to go all the way along the back because I want them to climb the, um, the wire here. I'm putting them down first so that the kids can see blue butterfly, please. Um, onions, I might, I might break up my alliums. So because I've just put the garlic and I've got the leeks here, I'm going to give it a break and I'm going to put other things in between. Okay, so basically all I do, I don't put too much effort into organising things. I just make sure that I don't plant the same things right next to each other. It's a basic pest management strategy. So any base, any organic or, um, or spray-free system we use into planting, basically. So let's just do that. Um, wild rocket again I'm not going to plant here I'll plant somewhere where it can be perennial is it raining yeah it's raining what um, I assume it's a good thing though well yes just surprising broccoli uh, what is that more broccoli so we'll put something else in between carrots Put them in the next row. Swedes. Um, wild rocket goes in my pocket. Beetroot, good oh. Next. Bunching up bunching onions. Even better. Break it right up. More onions. So I'll put more broccoli here. Cauliflower, onion. So what was that? So I'm going to go onion, cauliflower, uh, swedes. All right, so all I do is lay out some um, seed raising mix, the mix I showed you before. This is actually not the mix I showed you before because I ran out. So this is quite dry, but I will be watering everything, of course, as soon as I plant it. So I just make a row like this. I do two rows for each packet of seeds and then sprinkle the seeds on each row, just normal planting seeds and, um, and do this to cover the seeds. So then everything between the rows is heavily mulched and everything in the rows is able to come up without too much weed competition. There will be some weed competition from the mulch, uh, the compost I've used, but I can get on top of that, that'll be fine. All right, so that's it for the planting.
Okay, so we've got this whole lot planted up now. The other side of this run, I have got a lot of self-seeded things, the self-seeded uh, radishes down there. It looks a bit messy, but we're about to pick this up and put it on these hoops so it won't be messy. And right here, I've just put some of this uh, seedling mix down here because there is mustard self-seeding. So this is yellow mustard or black mustard rather, the seeds are black, the flowers are yellow. I just, I just got uh, sidetracked because the flowers are yellow and I've just, we've just been noticing the bees pollinating them, so that's nice. There's also a lot of garlic. So the garlic that's over here, I'm gonna separate and plant some of it here and some of it over here. And I'm also going to put broad beans over here. So really it's just gonna be much more simple robust sort of crops that can look after themselves over this side. Okay, now we're just putting the cover back over. So everything's gonna be snug under there. These seedlings especially um, need to be covered because the cabbage whites will just love them. And I do not want little nibblies laying eggs on it. So we'll cover it now, come back and have a look in a month. Okay, I'm gonna stop filming and help them now. See you soon, friends. I'm planting broad beans. So I've actually gone and collected all this from where I was feeding my horse. She um, poos there and also tromps around in the, the, um, the soil. So it's a nice little collection of poo and chopped up grass and quite nice soil from down by the driveway. So I've laid that down about an inch thick and covered it really heavily with um, just the straw, the, um, wheat, the wheat straw mulch. And now I'm going to plant my broad beans in there. And... It's still raining. We've had a couple of rainy days, which is just incredible. Not heavy rain, but this stuff is pretty good. It's not bad, it's, it soaks. So the ground's actually getting wet again, which is amazing, <laughs> just so amazing. So I've planted those now, and all I've done is just uh, made a, a little gone along with the seeds in my hands, my little hole and pushed the seed down into, into that um, layer of pooey, mulchy, <laughs> nice growing stuff that I put underneath. That's all I've done. Gonna water it, that's it. Broad beans are super easy. They're very big seeds, so they've um, got a lot of energy and it means that they have a lot of um, growing potential. They are very big, strong plants, and so they'll push through the straw, even where I've covered them a little bit. I have, I've tried not to cover them, but um, the stuff that I brought up will be full of weed and grass seeds. So I did need to mulch that quite heavily, and I might mulch it again once the plants come up. I'm also going to try a, um, a system of like a grid for these broad beans, because I do, once they get to a certain size, they do flop everywhere. So watch this space, I'll have a crack at that. Okay friends, well that was uh, filmed a week ago and we're just gonna go up and have a quick look now. Now I did pull the covers off um, about 10 minutes ago and the planting was only about five days ago so I'm quite happy to report that there's wee little babies coming up. It's raining, it's raining! I'm gonna go in here and talk to you. So yeah, this is that's the exciting development. The good news is it's raining. When I was filming that last week, we had a moment where suddenly it just started to belt down. Um, and it decided to do that exactly when I was laying out paper packets of seeds. Some of them are plastic, but their new packaging is paper. So it was like, what? It hasn't rained for three months. <laughs> so there was that, but rain, rain, oh my goodness. So it's not, you know, it's not been amazing. I was gonna say not drought breaking, it is drought breaking. Um, we had enough, but still didn't get as much as other places like Warrnambool, but we've had enough um, to soak the ground, which is amazing for, you know, top, top few inches. 
um, and there's grass growing everything's growing again which is just such a lovely feeling so that's been great and I think that's really helped my seeds along as I said it's only been about five days since we did that um, planting in but to sign out here I'm going to show you some footage of where they're at now there's tiny little little wee baby cotyledons if that's that seedling leaf really really cute um, and the seedlings that the kids helped me put in are all doing really well so there's that which is great um, everything's coming along well and that's about it for me on this video next video I'm going to show you how I made the Emporium and give you an overview of it show you how it works um, show you how I'm using it and give you some ideas on how you might uh, adapt the idea for yourself all right it's currently raining which is so nice it is so nice it's um it's so welcome so I'm gonna sign off for now thank you so much to everyone who subscribed I'm really really appreciating all the support um, if you haven't subscribed already I'd love it if you could just tap the button down there super easy um, and if you could give this video a like and and leave me a nice comment that would be absolutely fabulous I love chatting to everyone I'm sorry it took me a few days to answer all the um, all the comments last time but I just had a lot going on <laughs> and um, I will try and I always answer people I just just might take a little while there is so much rain now that it's getting a little bit loud in here um, I'm just in the short poly tunnel at, oh what's up come on come in here the Marema who doesn't like the rain do you like the rain <laughs> do you like the rain no you like to be snug don't you you like snugness you don't really want to be out in the weather no <laughs> you're a good girl <laughs> all, right. all right friends so that's it for this time i'll see you again very soon i have to get in and get editing this i've had a lot to do i've been preparing lots of things for autumn and winter now the rain has fin finally started things can start growing I've got some uh, plant, some trees and bushes and fruit trees and things like that that I'm going to plant. And I've got a few more things that I want to put in here, mainly the carrots and things like that and um, break up those garlic, the clumps of garlic and plant them in properly, things like that. All right, but for now, it's Huru from me. Huru. And then here's some pictures of the tiny baby little, oh, they're so gorgeous and adorable, tiny little uh, veggie seedlings from what we planted last week. It could only be five, six day, days ago. I think we did that last Tuesday, six days ago. So here's a little hello little peep from the, the um, seedlings already coming up. And so it's Huru from me, and it's Huru from...